Welcome everybody to another episode of the Popcorn Watchlist Podcast, where we discuss and celebrate our favorites in TV and film. I am your host, Xavier, and today it's a little lighter on the Popcorn Watchlist Council here, a um, little bit of a panel, but um, today I'm joined by both Danny and Zach. Say hello, gentlemen. Hello. What's up, everyone? And we're here uh, to give a quick little recap on a movie that just recently came out that we were really excited to watch. It's his, uh, I think, Gareth Edwards' first project, big project since Rogue One. He did also write and direct this, and um, it, it just hit theaters, so we wanted to give our take on The Creator. Really cool sci-fi action movie that um, just, again, just recently came out, um, was kind of billed by having a really, like, kind of tight budget, but still able to wow a lot of people with, um, uh, with some amazing uh, visuals. Yeah, I was really surprised to see just by just like watching it, just realizing like, wow, this movie isn't necessarily something crazy expensive. But, um, you know, uh, to get some to, to kind of give a round uh, roundup of the movie itself, give us our so, some favorite moments, what we liked and didn't like about the movie. I'm uh, actually really excited to talk about it. Uh, so I'll kind of give the floor over to Danny. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of the key facts from the film. Yeah, for sure. So, um like you did mention, it was on a smaller budget. Yeah, how much uh, exactly? Yeah, so the budget was eighty million for a movie like this. That's actually pretty good. That's yeah, smaller like than pretty, some TV pretty, shows. To over two hours, and it's very CG. Like it's extremely CG heavy. Yeah. Well. Yeah. It is, and it is, it is, and then there's also a lot like, of really cool practice. Shot on location, too. like beautiful settings, uh, like landscapes and. Yeah, a I mean, lot of stuff that makes it look, you know, a lot of Southeast Asian shots, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of things, like, it seems like Vietnam, Thailand, yeah, really, really pretty stuff. And we'll get into part of why that budget was made in a, in a moment, but uh, we'll go over the opening weekend, which was kind of disappointing, but the opening weekend in the U.S. was only $18 million. On a budget of eighty, yeah. it made eighteen million. And opening weekend worldwide was thirty-two million. That include U.S. or just everywhere else? Yeah. Uh, no, that includes. That US. includes the U.S. So it only yeah. made another, you know, uh, fourteen million worldwide. Yeah. Pretty out so of hand. Rough. So it's got a little rough, but I mean, you know, we'll see now in the next uh, weekend or so, just to see where it lands and if people start to watch it or over time i know it's getting a lot of like talk online um yeah there's a lot of talk in general like yeah. there is like you know we'll, we'll go over like you know good and bad on it but i think uh, uh there's still just overall like just like we're doing this episode a lot of discussion around it so yeah. pretty cool um i think it's pretty interesting to see and uh you know the cast is surprisingly pretty stacked yeah we got uh john david washington Yep, uh, our from boy from Tenet. Tenet. But I also, from Ballers, if you haven't seen Ballers, go watch Ballers. It's on HBO. I mean, Max, whatever. Uh, the one to watch. <laughs> no, it's the one to watch for HBO. God, I hate that so much. Wasn't he also recently in um, Amsterdam? Yes, yeah. he was. And, yeah, uh, again, with a stacked cast, Christian Bale, Margot Robbie. And he was also in a couple Netflix movies, like uh, Beckett. I don't know if you guys got to see that one. I think it's so. where he's like a tourist uh, in Greece, and then he like has to go on a run for something that he didn't do. <laughs> that sounds fun, but yes. And then also that black and white film with uh, Zendaya. Oh that yeah, that like I didn't Malcolm see. Malcolm and Mary. Yeah, that I didn't see, but yes. All right, nice. Yeah, and then uh, opposite from. Uh, John David Washington, we had Gemma Chan. Gemma Chan, yeah. Uh, and then... Uh, it's, it's like, have you seen both uh, Captain Marvel, but also like Eternals? Eternals, yeah. yeah. Uh, she was also in uh, Crazy Rich Asians. This is true. I keep forgetting that. I remember seeing that movie once, uh, and uh, I remember seeing all the hype around it, and then finally realized, wait, this is actually really good. Holy like crap. It. Yeah, movie was fun. Anyway. Um, uh, and, and then... Um, the kid in this movie, uh, Madeline Yuna Voiles, I think. Or 
could be boyless. I don't wrong. know. Yeah. But uh, she was hella good. She's probably she was great. She's she might be arguably the best actor in the movie. In the movie, yeah. Yeah, she might arguably be the best actor in the movie. Like I, I'll, I'll put that on record. She really carried a lot of the emotion in scenes, especially when it's like like unintentionally emotional. It's like, oh man, that's yeah. But like you know, some of the writing, was, yeah, it was very yeah. But like especially towards towards the end of the movie, which we'll get into later, um, definitely. Definitely stood out in the movie for sure. Yeah, and had some uh, good and iconic lines, like memorable, memorable lines. Yeah, like, yeah, she had some especially really like the trailer lines. line. Um, oh no doubt, yeah. So, but then and you also had Ken Watanabe, which I thought was dope. I was yeah. like, yeah, Ken Watanabe needs to be in more things. Um, and, and then um, you had the Colonel Howell, which was uh, Allison Jen. Jenny. Yeah, Allison Janney is um, insanely good and stuff. Like, uh, you gotta like. I, it's with I always randomly like you know you, we'll talk about like her being really good and things like you know in Bombshell like really heavy stuff. Um, but then uh, I loved her in um, Ducktales. Uh, <laughs> she she plays a, a side character like Goldie Oglit and it's like it's sort of like a like love interest for Scrooge McDuck um but um she's been in some other really big stuff I forgot was she in I don't know was that no was that her in I Tanya? I forgot but uh yeah she was in I Tanya. yeah it was I Tanya. um that like we're kind of like really picked up but like, like she was doing a lot of like like she's very versatile she's in both like a lot of animated stuff but then also in a lot of live action stuff and then, like again from comedy to yeah she can handle it all she's really good um, she was, was definitely more of like a serious role in this yeah this is sure. more like a go, rah, 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 <laughs> hoorah, we're bad you know we're the, we're the bad guys we're gonna do it for Merca. like that was, that was the kind of thing <laughs> um same thing with uh, the guy who uh played like one of the different uh like the the what the side men to the colonel um, no, no, no 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 not 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 mark menchaka but he's been in because he, he, he's been a whole bunch of random stuff that i've always seen like um like he was in ozark like, uh, that's, that's the main thing from. i know yeah. from but the guy who played omni uh amar chata patel mm-hmm. i know him from from the willow show mm. he was borman and uh he was really good in that like his his character really like would steal a lot of the scenes so he he made it a lot of fun but again like like all these like smaller roles a lot of people like you know just did their parts pretty well and then like you mentioned before we had gareth edwards direct and write and produce so yeah he took a lot on surprisingly um yeah pretty interesting um you know like it's cool like like overall like if we want to go right into it like you know like again like we talk about how it was shot i know zach's like the resident photographer um so like looking at you know you you commented on like how like good the movie looks it's just like man a lot of these like are like you know produce like cg shots but it's sort of like this like kind of future sci-fi has this shine and veneer with it, even with the um, the simulants that are that are running around, which are like is like the AI that's yeah. supposed to be this whole thing. Um, how surprised were you when you found out that this was shot on a Sony FX3? That only I, I think four thousand dollars for a yeah because <laughs> movie we, camera. We found that out like after the movie, yeah, or after we watched the movie. Yep, mm-hmm. that they did it, a bunch of like videos on YouTube, like talking about it or interviews and. Um, I had shared it with you guys on, on Instagram. But I mean, you you don't need a, you know, half a million dollar cinema yeah. camera to make a movie. You just need to have a good lens. You can have any camera and just have a good lens. Anything that's uh, that has like the cinematic look, anything with a wide aperture, a uh, good focal length, you know, 35, 50, 85 millimeter, whatever. And it's going to look good. Well, I'm sure now, like, especially with all the cameras we have nowadays and um you know i'm sure if also you're good at your job like and you have a vision yeah. for what you you kind of wanted to resemble or or be like you know and, and i think there are some parts or maybe most parts where they used a um an anamorphic lens which is what will give you that natural like widescreen uh, look uh, yeah 
um, like, like that, that cinemascope looking uh, with the black bars and everything. Because you can tell by the, by the bokeh. The bo- if the bokeh are more oval shaped, um, like uh, vertically, then you know that it's on, a, on an anamorphic lens because those lenses are oval shaped, which is how they are kind of able to, you know, get that shot. Get that um, dimension or whatever. Yeah, like it's not shot in in like a four by three or 16 by nine and then, and then cropped. cropped or, or like cut off from yeah. the top and the bottom. That, that's like all, like all in camera, which is pretty cool. Um, so, but you can, you can buy those lenses for probably a grand or two, like, like on the cheap. And, <laughs> and so you have a budget now of like, in terms of camera, you're like six grand. Minimum. <laughs> And, and that's just if you have one. That's like, like one. So yeah, you multiply one. that maybe yeah. by quite a few. But compared to like renting shot. out like an IMAX, you know, camera or like yeah. uh, those. Which are, is weird because right. w- wasn't this movie s- shot for IMAX? Yeah, it was shot not for IMAX. Filmed. But not, not filmed using IMAX. With IMAX. Yeah. That's correct. Which but is why, why we didn't watch it in Fort Lauderdale. But why <laughs> is it shot for IMAX? Because it looks so cool. <laughs> Why not put it on the big but, screen? Like shot for IMAX on a DSLR. <laughs> that, that, that's the weird part to me. Hey, I'll take it. But if it means getting more cool movies like this with smaller budgets and getting to tell some cool, unique ideas and new franchises, but it, no. it's still, it, it's still I don't know if I'd say way. completely unique, but it's still like yeah, yeah like obviously it yeah, does. It's have heavily some ideas inspired from, others, from a lot of a lot of <laughs> so from many others. However, not not yeah. t- not knocking away from Gareth Edwards, you know his his work in general. Like this was yeah. this was done. You know, it was really cool. Like it was so entertaining. Yeah. It, it followed a lot of kind of jumping here, but it's kind of it followed a lot of beats that we normally get in sci-fi, like stuff that we've seen before. Um, I find it kind of funny that we're talking about a movie uh, and a sci-fi action movie that talks about the pros and cons of AI. When our last episode was about the pure perils of AI with Terminator. Plus, uh, with the writer strike going on, yeah, or, which know, is now just gone. finished. Yeah, just finished. So now was also dealing with AI and yeah, know, everything is now AI. It's now AI. I think I was at the gym and they're like, "Hey, we can make an AI uh, inspired workout routine." I was like, "That's oh weird." God. Hey, join! And then I saw some commercial about like, uh, you know, have AIs simulate your portfolio for for your you know, uh, uh, economic and uh, your your funds and be able to do all that you know your finances. I was like, dude, that's weird. Like, you're trusting it to a person. Okay, cool. But now we're trusting it to a computer program. Maybe it's better. I don't know. Um, but point is, um, for the from a technical standpoint, how the movie was shot, um, it's really well done. Like it's it looks yeah. really slick. It's really nicely done. Um, I also randomly forgot to mention that we were talking about the cast. Uh, when Joshua, played by John David Washington, gets sort of like recruited back to go find uh, the the namesake of the movie called you know the creator. Um, it's uh they're being brought in by Allison Janney's character, but also uh, this general that's played by Ralph Innocen, and like you can you can kind of sort of like not see him, but you most certainly hear him. Like the moment Ralph Innocen speaks, you're just like, oh man, that's him. Like this is the guy, and uh, yeah, like that man has a commanding presence. If you've seen anything like The Witch, um, The Green Knight, he's even in that random boat guy in. Uh, the Northman, one of my favorite movies that come out recently, like where the boat before uh, uh, this guy the jumps attack. off. Yeah, yeah, like he's the captain of said boat because uh. Robert Eggers really likes him. But anyway, um, it was cool. Yeah, like hey, Ralph Fiennes in this, um, and yeah. Anyway, um, that was my two cents. I forgot. Um, but as we were mentioning, like on visuals and and uh, just the style of the movie. I mean, he did direct Rogue One. Um, like that was his last uh, project, I think. That was his last but directed film. film. Yeah, I but um, you could definitely so see some of the, the, like. Uh, and then before that was Godzilla. choices, yeah. Um, that he kind of carries over from Rogue One. I don't yes, know if you guys kind of saw some of those. Um, yeah, we talk about like the the looming like big ultra threat that's very yeah. similar. That's like this movie's Death Star is like the Nomad yeah. roaming like satellite. Throughout, throughout it's like Earth. high in space, but it's also like here really close. But whatever, um, it it looked really cool. Yeah. Like 
I don't know how it works in physics. I, I definitely thought of like the real. Death Star. Uh, oh, it's definitely like the Death Star. Of, it's a yeah. Death Star style weapon. Because, and then they had those uh, like X wings, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, yeah, like I, I, we have to kind of go and just basically giving the whole premise of the movie, like, kind of give the idea that basically. Um, there is uh like as ai expands and becomes more versatile and as a tool to use uh they start you know putting them into robot bodies and being able to use as manual labor yeah stuff similar to like the matrix uh or like the animatrix prequel stuff and it got it gets to a point where you know ai is being used for more and more things and as something happens there's a mishap with ai in los angeles and accidentally like you know, launches a nuclear missile and blows up a good portion of LA. Like a million people die and it's really bad. And so then the Western countries are like, no, we're not using AI anymore. Well, meanwhile, the rest of the world, like, you know, East Continues Asia, to, Southeast so. Asia, no, we're still going to continue to well, use AI. New, New Asia. New Asia, New which Asia. is basically like, it looked like Japan and like the Southeast Asian countries. Because like China was its own thing. Because they show a little map in the movie. And so the US is basically conducting strikes against um you know uh ai it's like you know ai sympathizers and ai uh like organizations or even just ai itself like that's being propagated that's you know it's sort of like a weird allegory to like you know a t war on terrorism and stuff but we're gonna fight it wherever and like don't care about border uh borders we're just gonna find stuff and bomb it yeah it's kind of like what happens and that's what them making the whole like giant nomad v satellite that flies around uh earth um you know like we use robots but they're not programmed with their own artificial intelligence and basically our main character is was embedded deep undercover um then gets pulled out of the mission and then they're spoilers, like spoilers by the way yeah it's like my yeah but not, <laughs> it, it, it's it's a little bit of it, but he gets he gets put back you know he gets brought back uh to try to find uh what's i think in nepalese is uh or Tibetan is uh, is uh, Nirmata, which is known as the Creator, and they go to the mission of finding and eliminating this you know quote unquote super secret weapon they have going on, and you know the plot ensues from there. Uh, but uh, you know like it's pretty interesting. Like it was cool seeing like a sort of like stylized like it, it looked like more of a realistic future. Like it, it, it seemed futuristic, but not like, oh, this is like outside of the scope of possibility. And uh, it, it, you know, it was relatable because it seemed like a lot of like, you know, black ops, special forces operations that normally happen a lot. Like, hey, let's find the target and then uh, find a drone to blow it up. And that's what the, uh, the nomad was doing. Just with uh, robots. Man with robots, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And sometimes people sympathizing with robots. Yeah. Uh, but like I remember the first thing that we were watching the movie and the first thing I, uh, Zach commented when you guys saw it was uh, is like all the explosions yeah. like the nomad explosions like were just legit like that first one yeah in the, one, the movie the you're like holy yeah. shit like yeah like because what well, well, Gareth Edwards does really well is he gives you a sense of scale yep and uh, I mean because the, throughout the movie they have like yeah you have like the, the different missiles and different explosions of, of varying sizes but the that first one in the beginning just seemed like like one of the bigger ones uh, because it was meant to essentially take out that that whole beach um, plus any other surrounding places and which is why when they go back later I, I don't know if it was like a uh, like a like a nuclear zone it or, seemed like the, it radiated the, like, the, the wall or whatever like no uh, like there's a point afterwards like oh like you're looking for the you know you're looking for the ring or whatever mm -hmm. like yeah minor plot point like they basically like use um joshua's like former uh wife to like they're saying like oh she's in league with the enemy and we have pictures of her but no she died and you know they, they're using that uh a footage of her to get him back in there so he's using a ring that was like coded mm -hmm. with the message or whatever or coded uh, a tracker a tracker yeah a tracker. so that yeah. they go back to like the the incidents and uh find some stuff but but they, they had to wear suits because like i don't know if it was because of radiation or something right yeah yeah something was... but the simulants obviously because they were simulants i didn't have to wear suits yeah yeah i think they're like one or two humans but like it was it was cool to see like okay cool like they're that's why they're able to go around in this environment but you know not humans yeah and then in the the explosion earlier in the movie where they took out that uh the like the, the 
I don't know, like the hiding place, like you know, like the the underground. Uh, like yeah, the lab, underground yeah, installation that, that where they have the beginning. secret weapon, which turns yeah. out to be, uh, you know, uh, Alfie. Alfie, which yeah. is you know, it's basically it's just a, a child like simulant. Like, what the heck is this? And you know, Joshua just, I'm gonna call you Alfie because we gotta get out of here because you're you're something, but I'm not out here trying to immediately murder you as part of the mission because I like that he's still stuck by his code. He's like, I don't really care about the whole like, you know. Western world against AI, AI blowing this up. He's like, I don't care. I just want to find my wife again. And like, he was like, te- technically not uh, completely on board with the mission anyway. So it, like him going off on his own thing once he finds Alfie and decides to kind of like rescue her and uh, you know take her along for the ride. He's just like, hey, I'm gonna use you to find my wife. I'm not gonna use you to. I'm not gonna out of some sense of patriotism or whatever. Like the sense of patriotism put him in the position he was in the first place. And now he's like, nah, forget that noise. Yeah, he he became a traitor, I guess. Yeah, he's like, oh, he's that, a traitor. That's, what, that's like, what the colonel. Yeah, he's like, oh, that man's a traitor because he's, he's he went off mission. Yeah. So he he went rogue. I was like, whatever, dude, you can do what he wants. <laughs> rogue one. He he went rogue. <laughs> it's like Andor with K two, except K two is not a sa- giant sassy robot. It's a, a cute, precocious, uh, and curious uh, uh, AI. Oh. A child which again like where you had a lot of like these for inspirations from a lot of these different movies like like the movie like spielberg's ai you also get some you know like the, the stuff running away another from like you know a little bit of like minority report you have um i robot the, yeah i robot the future city stuff from uh like, like blade runner over, kind of yeah like that sense uh I, well I th- but there were some really cool like little things that go on in the movie but yeah like everything from the visuals explosions going to yeah. the different locations and like like joshua like driving around in the car hiding and you know like showing off alfie's like kind of like disruptive emp powers um Ooh, yeah yeah cool. like that was like a hint of just like yeah she is the weapon like to bring it down but it was super cool to at least there were a lot of little small details i think that kind of like elevated it from just like a, oh i'm inspired by a whole bunch of these different sci-fi things like uh you know uh alfie was watching like an anime of like you know a lot of the rebel happening? ais fighting the nomad i was like this is kind of cool it's like that's cool like from a cultural standpoint yeah um it most of it was like, shot like propaganda it, you know propaganda or resistance whatever you may call it uh, for, you know, for kids <laughs> yeah or for anyway it's like yeah like cartoon so, version <laughs> think about it you're on the other side of the world and you see this thing going around and like blowing stuff up like you're not gonna eventually a, it's gonna like yeah you're yeah. not gonna have a pleasant idea especially if it's mostly in areas around where you live because you're harboring ai in yeah. that regards but um there's you know details like that um the whole like little details of his wife is presumed dead and like apparently she gave up her likeness to ai and simulants so that very various simulants can use her face I was like, that's cool. It's kind of weird, but like, there's a cool little like plot point. I kind of wish they would have not plot point, but like a little more detail that would have. And they kind of um, on the other hand, they kind of showed off like a like this uh, USB stick <laughs> that goes into uh, the AI and oh, it copy. it copies yeah. somebody's brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, like, like get like their their memories. Yeah, that was freaky. Memory, like that was cool when they first showed it off. I think like. Um, the uh the general or the the colonel yeah when she uh, she started using that tech to get one of the former yeah. soldiers and, and it's like, like oh, oh he died like hours ago so we only have like two minutes or you know as opposed to like if they're freshly yeah. died you could yeah. get a whole scan of their brain yeah. which reminds me of was the show uh on netflix altered carbon where like if it's like so pure could you take that and then upload yeah. it into like another body and then you basically live forever whatever yeah like there are so I mean, many it is kind of they had cool ideas yeah there are a lot of little cool ideas that just kind of get sprinkled in there like there's a part later on where there's a um like a lot of the simulants like they're in uh like it looks like nepal um like up in the in the himalayas and like you have a lot of simulants like as buddhist monks like they took up yeah yeah i'm ai but i'm gonna go be a buddhist monk so it's like <laughs> like little cool stuff like that like you even get like i think in like overwatch like now like you have like certain you know robot or omnics as they call them that, that, that like have their own personalities and you know one dude's a you know like a a, a zen a zen monk <laughs> and it's, it's 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 and it's cool to see a lot of that like that was very really cool things and again the exact point like a lot of it's shot on on location like in thailand like 
is that that made things look really cool like and you can use a really awesome and beautiful landscape it was half of it's like i was watching the movie like man i kind of want to go to you know like Kathmandu or something and like go to like the base of of some of these mountains just to experience it yeah it's like half tourist guide without the um overreaching of the u.s army in in helvetica no i don't know i'm trying to remember like uh sorry it's a reference to something that happens later on with uh the whole when they have those two massive tanks oh, oh yeah when they're attacking that village yeah and you just see yeah. like u.s army <laughs> just like in like a really like weird like font i was oh, just like what yeah. the heck yeah like it's not in like a like it, it's not in a font it's looks not like more, in a block like, like, like military yeah, like right? block it looked kinda, like yeah. hey i um i need to submit this for the art project really quickly <laughs> for my you know uh undergrad art class and uh oh U- u.s army in helvetica looks great <laughs> it still was in comic sans <laughs> at least it was in comic sans i think i i think i would have cackled in the theater because like it's kind of messed up too, so too yeah. it's kind of messed up too because like that scene is also pretty powerful because that's like after um you know joshua uh gets kidnapped and he's trying to take and uh protect alfie uh from from the actual stimulus because he wants to go and find you know oh you have to find uh you know uh maya his wife which like the the whole idea as we find out the movie it's like oh wait she is the creator like she's the she's the one who actually took everything over and he was like you know bamboozled like oh Sam, i didn't know that but, um yeah that whole battle sequence was pretty intense like uh again there was some really cool stuff like i could tell like oh yeah like this has like flavors of rogue one from it and then they're on that like one long bridge and uh you had that like suicide bomber a u.s army robot <laughs> The, the 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 robot bombs yeah it's just that like it's like it was an honor ma'am and he just ran off <laughs> just but like, like they both buggy. looked at each other like who's going first i was just like that's <laughs> like little stuff like that you're like okay they're robots they don't have ai so it's not artificial intelligence but it's like oh we're just ethically unethically creating robots to just go blow themselves up yeah like that was nuts dude like and especially like we have to talk about that earlier scene too where josh was like at his day job after the whole ordeal and he was undercover for the government and he's like picking up debris and pieces from the blast zone in LA. And like, he's with that one coworker and like one of the uh, robots c- come up to like, b- kind of like back up to life. Cause but it's like trying to like still save somebody. Like, and you can tell it's like, Hey, it's, no, no. Like, like it's calling someone's name. And then like, you have to like unplug it. And it's like, it's not alive. It's not alive. And you know, those little things like that come back alive or come back around when after this whole thing, when they find, uh, you know Maya he's there with Alfie and they get picked up by the government they're like no sir don't worry you did your job they're they're not li- they're not alive it's not alive like they're repeating the same line to him <laughs> like there were like, there were some really cool like repeating beats and themes to it um, it comes full circle yeah and a lot of it was showing off that like you know AI had the capability of being both cruel but also like uh being like compassionate like almost more so than most of the human uh, the human characters that um that was again a theme that yeah you get that a lot too like that's from other movies or other points of media that like you know are, are the real monsters are humanity and all that stuff <laughs> you know it's the whole like frankenstein thing but uh i know i, I kind of like went through some of my favorite moments or some of the things i thought were really cool but like i don't want to take up the air here gentlemen uh what were some of your favorite stuff or favorite, you know, sequences, shots, uh, lines that you guys uh, that you guys like from this movie. Uh, I like a lot of the dialogue moments between um, Alfie and Joshua. We're gonna play a game. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, one part that I like was the um, when they're in the truck. I think. Yeah, when they're in the truck, and then um, you know they're kind of like. Um, going over and like you see that's part of what the trailer like the quote from the trailer um, of the uh, oh no it's not the truck I think they're on a bus or something yeah where it's like uh, we can't I can't go to heaven because uh, oh yeah I'm not cause, a person cause I'm not, yeah. not good he's like I'm not a good person he's like oh but I can't go to heaven because I'm not real you're like damn little yeah. girl <laughs> that's sad ow well, the, the quote was um, oh, and, and we're the same or, yeah. or, or like, yeah, the same, same. Like, like you're you're not a 
You're not a good. You can't you're get not to good, heaven. and I'm no, not a person. person. Like we can't get to. He- we're the same. We can't get to heaven because you're not good, good, and, and I'm, I'm not, not a person. person. You're yeah. like, oh no. And how how wild was it that then like oh no like we like the whole idea is just like you know like this um, the one character is like comatose and so like uh, like uh, Alfie's like referring to them as their mother is like oh well, help mom get to he- get to Dinjan or get to heaven I was like oh uh, like yeah. that hit I was like man that's rough. Um, another funny uh, moment that I I liked was uh, with the dog. Oh my god! Uh, the <laughs> with the grenade. The grenade. <laughs> Yeah. No. With, with the, <laughs> what was up with animals in this every, movie, by the way? <laughs> with the, so the AI uh, was coming to like <laughs> stop them, obviously, like with the guns and everything. And then they throw a grenade into okay. the garage while they're in the truck or getting into the truck. And the dog just grabs the grenade and runs out towards the AI. I heard my theater go, oh no. <laughs> like, you yeah. were like, yo, this dog's going to like <laughs> blow up. But the dog just kind of like dropped it on the floor and like. And it rolled off. <laughs> rolled like, off and, and like the blew hole. up the AI. Which is <laughs> Blew up one of them in half. And like it was still up and running around. I was yeah. like, it was like weird. I, I remember thinking about it. I was like, is this meant to be funny? Is it kind of yeah, jarring? Like, I don't know. But I was like, okay, no, I'm going to take it as like, okay, cool. Like, better the, than the, the dog. Heroes, uh, like, it, it, it took it as a hero's got a break. Like, or like the protagonist got a break. Let's get him out of here. Or, and uh, that was, yeah, like, it was, it was a cool, it was a cool sequence. Like, I mean, it, it definitely mixed a bit of humor to uh, like the seriousness going on. And uh, yeah, again, like with the two robots, yeah. like uh, the, 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 the bomb robots. Uh, there were some other sequences that were really like cool that could have been like maybe like uh, not not that like it's unintentionally funny, but there was a couple sequences that like um, yeah they were more cool, but almost like not darkly funny, but like oh man that sucks. <laughs> like uh, the attack on the base, uh, like that's off on the river uh, after the 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 tanks had got like the scans of the targets and then they they mm. kind of like shoot the rockets. Yeah. Man, I, that was wild. We're like, oh, cool. I, I just got to find cover. And one of the, the, the like, the other, like, cool seeming guy that was hanging around with uh, Ken Watanabe's character, Harun, like, he's he's trying to run away from it. But as he gets undercover, he sees, like, like, uh, like uh, some other, like, uh, like other human people, like, a uh, human family, like, with young kids. And, like, I think, like, one other similar. He's just, like, he's, like, hey, it's going to be okay. And then he, like, turns around so that, like, if the rocket hits him, it only hits him and doesn't it hurt them. I was, like, man, that's messed up but it was the whole again theme of like you know i'm gonna have to take one for the take one for them because we're not awful people or we're not awful like the you know the unrelenting you know traumatic anger and rage of the u.s army (laughs) um and the same thing happened with uh this would be spoilers so this is like way too far into the like there's one that one so there's two times where like uh somebody gets hit with like uh, like a oh, tag that's oh, been actually yeah. a bomb, like like a semtex. Yeah, <laughs> like the first the first time that happened, and they're like, "Please, like, hey, I'm good." I was like, I, I was immediately yeah. thinking, I was like, "That's a bomb." Like, <laughs> yeah, me too. Like, because like, I was like, "There's no way." And then like, the second time, you're like, "Wait, no one's still not realizing." Yeah, like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, Sean, like, come on, it's the thing again. Like, <laughs> it's totally the thing again. Like, come on, and it's and, and the the wild thing is the second time it happened. Uh, you have Alfie. Wasn't it in the plane? No, no the second no, 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 time was the first. Oh, the second yeah, yeah, time yeah. was in the temple. Uh, uh, yeah. And like they get to the point where they're like, no, no, take it off. And then like they freak out and uh, Alfie shows up and then disrupts EMP, it and yeah. does the EMP thing. And I was like, damn, that, that's messed up. You're out here trying to kill kill this little girl, but she rose up and saves your life anyway. Yeah. But then like yeah. the other guards were like, no, no, step away. And like they kind of like, you know, like us like accosted yeah, her. Typical. Yeah, typical. And then she and then that other character was like, wait, wait, no. And then that character blew up. <laughs> well, yeah, because because Josh had like grabbed her to like protect yeah. her. Well, because the other because well, the guards were about to shoot yeah, her yeah, anyway. Yeah. yeah. But that other but then, the, then that then main character is like, hey, no, like d- hold your fire, because it's like, oh, I'm gonna blow up if you do something, but those guys are stupid. Yeah. 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 And so it, it was that was an interesting like spin on it all. And um and like a lot there's a, a good amount of foreshadowing in this movie too. Again, like part of it, some of the stuff uh what is it called? Like predictable. Like when the 
the humans and the AI police go raid uh, where Joshua was trying to hide with uh, his former friend that like ran the factory. Oh, like in the yeah. like that building that um... yeah, mm-hmm. and like you know his former friend had like was uh, living with the that the AI simulant, and she's like trying to find ice cream for yeah. Alfie, <laughs> and uh, like you like you know the cops were gonna come in. But then, like you know, that also the two of the, like some of the cops were actually the U.S. Army people. Yeah, and you're like, oh, you know, it's gonna happen. And it's like, oh, it, it, but it's still like entertaining. Like you know well, it, but you know it's entertaining either way. Like my, that, that's to me the whole the whole movie. That scene, um, where they're where like Alfie and the and the lady are up in the apartment and stuff, and she orders the food or orders the ice cream. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys caught it, but um, when when she was closing the door on, on the delivery guy. He's like, oh, like leave, leave, a, leave, good a, leave a good review. Like, yeah, <laughs> just yeah, add this good review. Door. <laughs> and I was like, some things just never change, even in the future. <laughs> which you is, know. which I thought was kind tip of funny. But then, Uber, tip but your Uber eats. Guys. And then, then it's revealed that it's, it's a bomb, and that like, it's uh, um, that character, that the actor, whatever his name is, the guy who played Borman in. Uh, yeah, like it's his simulant, but like there's more than. It's funny because yeah. there's more than one because they gave up the you know the face, the face. Like, you know, so yeah. yeah, so. Um, yeah, that sequence is cool because then she was like, oh, man, it's like, oh, come on. And then, like, it blew up. But, like, you know, because she's, in essence, like, a, like that simulant. And, uh, you know, the all thing was, you know, just to save uh, to save Alfie. So um, it was dope. Like, like again, like, a lot of it for me was, like, a, a lot of, even, like, the fi- the final act where it's like, oh, we have, like, they even talked about, like, only way to bring down the nomad is that she has to be up there. But to be up there, she has to sacrifice herself. And it's like, oh, they kind of did that. Um, and the same thing, like when they were hiding and trying to sneak away from the base, it's like, oh, we're going to put them on standby mode. And like they, they did the whole, like, it was just like standby mode. Like, okay, we're going to write up standby mode. So it's like, you know, I don't want to say predictable writing, but it's, it's, it's tele- a little telegraph, but it still does like, the job. Like he's like, oh, not off. Yeah. Uh, not off standby. Like, oh, cool. And again, like it, and, uh, it, it worked yeah, like, yeah, at least for cool. me overall, like those little sequences worked and then they. You know, get themselves out to the moon, or like it was like I thought. Well, it was not cool. to, well I thought I was like, I why are like, they going to the moon? <laughs> but like, it also like, oh, they're good. They're, it's funny because like, oh, like I want to, you know, go to the moon because they were playing "Fly Me to the Moon" earlier in the movie. Uh, and, you know, at the credits, you have Claire de Lune playing. I'm like, dude, this is all right. Like, okay, I see what you're doing here, Gareth Edwards. So, uh, you know, that that whole like riveting escape sequence to then get to the Nomad to take it down was uh again like it's predictable like you kind of un- guess what's going to happen not guess but you can kind of figure out what's going to happen but it's still really well done like i think it was uh it, it every all the story beats landed and it looked good despite it being pretty predictable it looked great <laughs> yeah the movie uh, yeah all the explosions all the rockets and stuff that just looked really freaking good um extremely surprising um any other like you know favorite moments or takes that you had zach mm. he's like explosions explosions are great <laughs> just it's all like, the explosions it's like the aliens mean explosions <laughs> just, uh, explosions. <laughs> explosions and water that's that's zach that's what zach's new thing is bro the water no, <laughs> the water <laughs> bro, bro. yeah the water when the nomad bomb blew up in the beginning like Holy crap, that beach got bombed. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking banned. Uh, no, I can't think of anything else. Uh, I mean, I think it's, I covered you know what I wanted to talk about there and that for that part anyway. But the 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 traveling from the the plane or rocket up to the uh, ship was actually a pretty cool sequence. Um, ground off flights but not that one oops yeah yeah, yeah. they got out there it's like that typical type of like uh escape the airport type scene of course uh, like yeah. on the plane yeah. last minute yeah uh, the, it's like oh no like we need to get through and then alfie's like okay yeah you're good now yeah. thanks buddy <laughs> like oh it's just trouble because oh, like it was like like the the um, the ticket reader i guess was like an ai like, like, like why are you traveling or why oh yeah it was a robot just like what is the reason for this yeah it's like, is it it's business like, oh, or pleasure? free yeah he's like be free he's like oh, okay cool like <laughs> done <laughs> done um one thing i liked was like the, the structure of the movie is basically like a, a four part, part like uh, act, yeah, or four acts uh, yeah movie in four parts but i like the uh yeah, like each banner was like of the chapter. Like that was pretty cool because I think you had it. I think it was in 
it might have been in Chinese or it might have had like Japanese katakana characters, but at the same time, and you had like when it said creator, it said like Nirmata means creator in this, and then you have the child, and which is Alfie, the friend, which was the you know, I think that meant two, that it was almost like two ways, yeah, like uh, you kind of figure out multiple that, like, meanings, yeah, like the, you know, like this girl, little girl can be a friend, you can be a friend of a little girl and help her, but also he had his friend to help him get to the next stage and uh you know like oh they're coming to get me my friends and you're like oh cool there yeah. we go yeah and then lastly you have the mother, uh, the mother which, which was which was a nice ties it all together it tied it together which is you know the creator also the you know the mother is the creator is kind of all in one nice little circle it's cool yeah like it was i, I found the movie very entertaining and uh, like it did, it's, it, it set out to do the job, and I think it did it well. Like, is it is it is it monumental, groundbreaking, like new themes and you know sci-fi with a mix of really slick visuals and great action? Yeah, like it's it, it's not crazy unique, but it's still entertaining. It's still cool. So with that, what do you what do you rate it? Me? Oh, am I on the spot first? Yeah, you, oh, you just you just gave your uh, rundown. I, I did say. my rundown. So based on the rundown alone, like I think I'd give it a seven. Solid. Yeah, a solid seven. <laughs> solid ice, good ice cream seven. IGN seven. <laughs> she never got her ice no, cream. No, that's an IGN eight. <laughs> the IGN seven is now the IGN eight. But no, like I'd give it a seven because like yeah, like there's some things like again like some it borderline became like you know like oh man this is predictable but. There were small details and the way the movies shot um, and the way some of uh, a lot of the cast, you know, brought up the acting. Like, again, like I can't say enough that Madeline Univoy did such an amazing, phenomenal job. Like yeah. that last sequence where she's kind of like, it's kind of like she's crying tears and then it turns to tears of joy. Is like, that's yeah. like picture perfect like transition when with the whole scene at the end of that aftermath i don't want to do a major spoiler but like that was on the money and like, again there there are themes and uh, themes that we've deal, dealt with before but i think it still was pretty effective and uh yeah like a lot of the simulant stuff was just really creepy seeing like you know there's no brain there on the side i don't know, like again for it being only done with 80 million dollars is extremely surprising yeah definitely needs to uh, I, I would definitely say watch it in theaters for sure if you can uh, yeah well now you're telling people to watch it in theaters yeah. what was your what's your rating Danny when it comes into watching it in theaters uh I'm gonna give it a little higher score uh, oh. I'm gonna give it a IGN 8 wow IGN 8 <laughs> um not an I IGN know, 88 I, I think um everything that this movie does good just is is good you know like it definitely holds up um and kind of like everything i kind of wanted it to be right. um visually was phenomenal acting was pretty solid story was pretty solid uh, i mean it's not like groundbreakingly new like you mentioned but uh i had a good time with it i was entertained i was curious throughout the whole thing and i just had my eyes glued on the screen so I think it did everything it, it was meant out to do. So give it an eight. All right. So a solid eight. Okay, cool. And I want to see it again. <laughs> so again, yeah. I mean, even if, theaters, if, if yeah. you're going to watch it just for like, for, for like the visual spectacle of it, go be all means. Yeah. I think it's, that's pretty awesome. Very, very cool. Um, Zach, rounding it out with you. All right. Young kid. Let's see what you got. <laughs> Whew. I mean, I'm I'm kind of up there with you guys. Um, I mean, to to give it a score, what it would be is a good one. Um, <laughs> Cause I I I'm kind of there with, you know, like I agree with your score, Danny, but I also agree with your score, X. Like it's there. Um, is it gonna be? It's gonna be an IGN uh, seven point five. Uh, seven. <laughs> Seven point five. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I think I think it's seven point five because I don't think it deserves a seven, but I don't think it's <laughs> it, it, it. I I would give it an eight. You know, I would go that high to give it yeah. an eight. Um, so this I think, is where Anthony needs to come in and be the tiebreaker. <laughs> yeah, Anthony out on a, a well-deserved vacation <laughs> is hard because I have a feeling he would give it a six. Ooh. Yeah, I have a feeling you get a six. It, it, but it, like I think like he he'd really like me really appreciate the 
the visual aspect and like again from a technical standpoint like hey man this movie being made for only 80 million dollars is a testament and a feat and it shows that the, Just the cinematographers and through. the direction really went through I think he would knock it a lot on the writing yeah, I think the acting he'd say would be just fine, but I think a lot of it would be the writing and the story because it's he would find it pretty predictable. Uh, we'll find out one day, <laughs> not one day, maybe next time he, when he comes back in, we'll get a quick little tick. Like, hey, before you go, you know, give him a, a chance to say his piece of on the creator. Well, I, I was gonna say, oh, you should text him right now and see what he says. <laughs> that dude's asleep. No, I'm kidding. Um, but seven, yeah, it's seven, seven, yeah, seven point five. Um, uh. A lot to what Danny was saying, like like a lot of like solid uh, parts of this movie. The acting, uh, I think the best part was probably the cinematography uh, to it, like the okay. shots, the visuals, everything looked really really nice. Um, but you know, again, the someone coming from someone who's into photography and like like cinematography, um, like the the look of it, you know, it, the water. It, it has it has the, <laughs> the water, especially the water. Uh, but it has it has the look that I like uh, in movies, and it has that monkey blowing up the tank. That's my oh, dude! <laughs> oh, did we ever yes. talk about the monkey? No, we, we never didn't. Talk no, about the monkey. I was about to do it, but like, wait a minute, we just talk about the monkey. He's just like, did like, oh, the man. monkey look? He's like, yo, it's time. He, he but, understood the assignment. <laughs> but apparently, there's a story about that monkey. Like before, we have to talk, that might influence your review. Like I, I heard there's there's some stories about um, that monkey. Where like how they got the the monkey to get trained to press the button, uh, like for the movie? Yes, like like how they filmed to get the monkey. And I I wanted to like, read somewhere. I don't know if that was real or not, but that's freaking hilarious. Um, like apparently like they had to use like a, a monkey of the opposite like sex to like to, to I don't know like I have to someone fact check me on that, but like I heard some really funny stuff about that, like how they had to get the monkey to do that. But yeah, that that sequence is cool too. Like that was like how they blew up one of the tanks because they were, you know, they tried to do the whole we're gonna blow up the the treads on the tank thing. That was during the uh, like the the attack on the on the base while he while Joshua was trying to get Alfie out. Yes. Oh, okay. Never mind. I th- wait, the base. Which base? The one on the river. Okay, the one on the river. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and we got that other sequence is really cool. That so the colonel. Uh, how they like brought back one of the simulants but didn't bring back her eyes but they were like pretending to fix her up oh yeah just as like a mind game i remember watching that and she's like hey don't worry and like you're hearing the vietnamese i'm like that's the colonel i like it means it's like that's a mind game like you're outsmarting ai right now like you should feel really good uh yeah um (laughs) monkey versus tank uh yeah um monkey wins yeah it it was pretty dope um that sequence is funny like that, that like, like I that whole, we're talking that, about that sequence that when we got se- out of the yeah. theater. We're like that, a monkey. That whole sequence is really scary too. Like when the second bomb is about to blow up, but Alfie like stops it, and then uh, you know Joshua saves her after like you know poor Alfie got shot in the arm. I was like, what the hell, dude? So you know it's cool that they helped her, and then they take her to where Nirmata lives and is able to heal her, or, you know, to fix her up. Anyway, we talked about it. ratings. We talked about that, but we had to talk about the monkey blowing stuff up. That was hilarious. That monkey looked at it and was like, yeah, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, he looked at the tank too. He's like, I think I know what this does. <laughs> Clearly I don't like you. you. knew what it does. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I don't like your face. Time to blow up. <laughs> Get out of here. All right. Nice. So, um, yeah. Um, I Overall, like we we enjoyed ourselves watching the movie. Uh, we went through, you know, this whole episode kind of talked about our pros and cons, I think, for it. But if you still haven't seen it and you just want like listening to us for our recaps before you go out to get a movie recommendation let me just go and say yeah go watch it i think you'll have a good time just i think uh, all three of us uh, say go watch it yeah go watch it even from a, just from a visual standpoint yeah story's predictable okay but i think uh, it still hits its beats uh it does the it, it sets out it com- accomplishes what it sets out to do uh danny so uh Flipping, flipping things over to a little bit. We're gonna keep it in the sci-fi realm, but uh, what are we doing next week? Is it sci-fi? <laughs> it's it's, yeah. it's science it's fantasy, fantasy. It's fantasy, science fiction slash so fantasy. So next week, uh, we're gonna be discussing uh, the season of Ahsoka. Man, I'm gonna have to like tone down how long we get into that one because yeah, that that's one might be, be a bit. But I have to make sure I don't, you know, overload it. You know. Uh, uh, because, you know, 
uh, spoiler alert, I loved this sh- I loved this show that we're going to be talking about. I actually really loved this show. And um, for the past uh, good chunk of episodes, we've been doing movies. So we're finally going to have a TV show episode. Yeah, because we couldn't talk about that hot D so much because Zach hasn't seen it yet. Yeah, so Maybe now on we your vacation. could have done the episode without me, <laughs> but you know. Maybe <laughs> now on your vacation coming up, while you have Just all this watch flight it. time, you can Maybe. watch that. You can get on that hot D. I get D. some good sleep on the plane. Maybe. <laughs> but, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we finally got a show where all of us have uh, watched it, caught up at the time of uh, the release of the final episode. So uh, we'll, yeah. we'll go into that whole season uh, yeah, for can't, next week. Absolutely. Cannot wait to talk about Ahsoka next week. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, again, I uh, kind of talk about it overall and because like, you know, we get to judge it on as a completion, not just episode by episode by episode. Uh, we had attempted that a little bit with Last of Us, and I think with TV shows, if you know, depending on how long, how many episodes we get, it's good to kind of review it as a whole. So we're gonna try that out next week. I hope you guys uh, tune into that and enjoy it. Um, if you haven't yet, please go ahead and uh, get on those uh, socials, jump on our YouTube, and hit like and subscribe, and leave a review on your podcast. Uh, platform of choice you know we're always looking to try to improve this thing but also uh we love doing it so uh if we can make it more entertaining and more engaging for you all uh please do us a solid and let us know how we can keep that going um until next time everybody thank you so much for tuning in we'll catch you next time see ya later